When exploring new avenues in science and technology, the scientific process is incredibly important, from hypothesizing to researching. Experimentation is the culmination of that process, revealing what was done correctly or incorrectly. Every once in a while, these experiments can yield interesting results that were nothing like scientists predicted would happen. Usually, these results are benign and totally safe. But, from time to time, experiments are done that researchers and scientists did not realize came dangerously close to ending millions or even billions of lives. In the early 1940s, there was a top-secret research program going on that the public was originally unaware of, known as the Manhattan Project. This undertaking was done during World War II for purposes of developing a new weapon that would greatly shift the scales of power. After an enormous amount of study and research, they were finally ready to test their newest design, the atomic bomb. Trinity was the code name of the first detonation of a nuclear device. On July 16, 1945, in the arid Hornada del Muerto desert, the bomb was detonated. The device exploded with an energy equivalent to around 22 kilotons of TNT. The desert sand melted and became a mildly radioactive light green glass. It also created a crater that was 4.7 deep and about 88 yards across. Although this was meant to be a top-secret test, civilians noticed the bright lights. Originally, the Air Force issued a press release saying that an ammunition magazine containing a considerable amount of high explosives and pyrotechnics exploded. It was only after the bombing of Hiroshima that news of the Trinity test was made public. In the scope of humanity-ending weapons, the Trinity test definitely falls short as a single nuclear explosion. So, why is it on this list? Prior to this test, no nuclear weapon had ever been detonated before. So, there were a considerable number of scientists who were worried about what might happen. One man in particular, Edward Teller, urged officials not to move forward with the test out of fear that the explosion would ignite the atmosphere, causing destruction around the globe. Ultimately, the tests were done and none of the fears came to fruition. But this did set the stage for even riskier nuclear testing. After the Trinity test and the successful detonation of the two atomic bombs during World War II, America focused more of its efforts to study the application and effects of atomic bombs. How could you deploy them? Where would you deploy them? Would they be best in certain circumstances? All of these questions led to the United States conducting hundreds of tests over the years, studying the various applications of the atomic bomb. One of these tests was known as Starfish Prime. Starfish Prime was a high-altitude nuclear test. On July 9, 1962, a W-49 thermonuclear warhead was loaded onto a Thor rocket and launched from Johnston Atoll in the Pacific Ocean, about 900 miles west of Hawaii. However, this explosion wasn't meant to be fired at a target on the ground or even in the air. It was aimed at space. The explosion took place at an altitude of 250 miles. It had a power that was 100 times greater than the World War II bombs. While it was a spectacular sight to behold, there were many dangers that scientists did not consider. The largest of these had to do with the fallout from the explosion itself. True, it was in space. How much fallout could there actually be? After the explosion, around 26 additional rockets were launched to take readings. It was found that the radiation from the explosion not only lingered, it expanded with the force of the blast. Could the radiation make its way back down to Earth? Would there be an environmental effect? These were all questions that came up when it was learned that there was still a significant amount of radiation in space. Should it have fallen back to Earth, hundreds of millions could have been affected. Stuffed away on the Russian Kola Peninsula lies a picturesque landscape full of lakes, forests, mists, and snow. However, this area also contains one of the most unique and wondrous things on the planet, the Kola Borehole. This massive hole was dug deep into the Earth's surface by Russian scientists as they wanted to learn more about the Earth's crust. How did it evolve? What elements and minerals exist at extreme depths? Today, Kola Borehole is the deepest man-made hole in the world. 
It took workers over 20 years to reach a depth of 40,230 feet, which is nearly a mile deeper than Challenger Deep, the deepest spot in the ocean. Efforts to continue kept hitting roadblocks as the temperatures at this depth had reached an extreme level of 356 degrees Fahrenheit. The drill bits would get too hot and break. So, the decision was made to abandon the project altogether and seal up the 9-inch diameter hole. But this experiment didn't come without a certain level of risk. Many Russian scientists were worried about what effect drilling this deep into the planet would have. The biggest concern was what kind of impact this would have on the tectonic plates. Some scientists thought that by drilling this hole, we would cause massive earthquakes all over the planet, leading to immense levels of destruction. Nevertheless, the drilling went forward, and in the end, none of their fears ever came to fruition. Between the early 1920s and September of 1992, the Soviet Union operated the world's largest and most sophisticated biological weapons program. The facilities operated prior to and during World War II. Following the war, the testing only grew more prevalent throughout the country at various different facilities. Here, they would research and develop weaponized versions of a number of bioagents. Perhaps one of the most alarming is the plague. The plague is responsible for taking the lives of up to 60% of the population of Europe in the 14th century. By the late 1980s, the Soviet Union had weaponized it into a warhead that could be launched towards a target of choice. If they wanted to, they could have spread the plague in any population. Luckily, the device was never used, and hopefully never will be. It wasn't until after the fall of the Berlin Wall that one of the program directors, Vladimir Pesechnik, went public with evidence that this occurred. While testing is thought to have ended in the 1990s, the truth is, nobody knows for sure if it did. I'd say the odds are it still goes on to this day. The Large Hadron Collider is the world's largest scientific instrument as well as the world's most powerful particle accelerator. Particle accelerators are machines that use electromagnetic fields to propel charged particles to very high speeds and energies and to contain them in well-defined beams. These incredible machines are used for basic research in particle physics, the study of radiation as it relates to matter. Having such a powerful machine has been considered a potential danger by some members of the scientific community, as colliding particles together at near the speed of light could bring about some incredibly disastrous results. Many theories have come about saying that some world-ending effects are possible. One theory is that the experiments could create a black hole, sucking everything inside and destroying our planet. Others have said that by colliding the particles together, it could generate subatomic quarks that could end up compressing the Earth into a planet no larger than the size of a football field. There is, unfortunately, a third way that a few experts believe is an unlikely possibility, but a possibility nonetheless. They believe that space-time could get ripped apart. No matter how outlandish it sounds, something with such serious repercussions should never be taken lightly. Scientist Martin Rees explains that even though we think that space is empty, it actually has all the forces and particles that govern the physical world. He went further to say that the vacuum that we are able to observe is actually fragile and unstable. What this means is that when a collider creates concentrated energy as it does, it can cause something called a phase transition which would tear the fabric of space. Although humans go to great lengths to make sure that their scientific studies do not have adverse effects, there are sometimes unforeseen effects which could be incredibly disastrous. It is even stifling to think about what could happen if the research had been taken to further levels. Hopefully, scientists and the governments that are funding the research will continue to operate with control and safety.